open our eyes on how to level up our resume game. First, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm going to introduce myself and what ADP List is all about, what to expect for this event before we kick it off. So my name is Zin Yao, pronouns are she and her. I'm a senior UX designer at Honeywell, co-organizer of Ladies at UX Atlanta, and a design mentor at ADP List. You may be asking, what is ADP List? So short for Amazing Design People List. So ADP List is a global community for making genuine connections. It's a platform where people can find, book, and meet mentors from all around the world. So our mission is to foster an inclusive space and support network for designers to come together, learn from each other, and strive to be better. So if you haven't had a chance to check our community out, head over to adplist.org after this event. All right, some of our community milestones that we're super proud of. I also call this our world domination metrics. So since ADP List started just last year, we have grown so much. We now have over 2,000 mentors on the platform, leading to over 5,000 one-on-one -on -one sessions. We've hosted over 80 events, tackling a variety of topics. And pro tip, a lot of those events are recorded and shared on our YouTube channel. So with our platform touching over 70 countries, we're very proud of the global impact we've had on connecting people together. Okay, what to expect for this event. So this will be recorded. So by attending, you grant your consent. We will be using a, a Q&A tool called Pigeonhole. Uh, we'll drop a link into the chat where you can enter your question like normal, but you also get to vote and rank. And then those ranked questions will be what we will ask Jerry and John at the end. Uh, please no hate speech and no discriminatory behavior. Keep it clean, keep it nice. And then at the end, we'll do our traditional uh, family photo group selfie. So we hope to see your smiles at that time. And Jerry and John are going to be uh, dropping a lot of wisdom and knowledge and takeaways. So please use that as an opportunity to share uh, what you learned, what you really, what you really enjoyed uh, with our social media uh, platforms. Announcement. So can't share too much right now, but we have an exciting product launch announcement on Thursday. So if you haven't already, please connect with us on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you'll get the news when we drop it. All right, and now to uh, dive into our event, we have two wonderful, amazing speakers. So John is the CEO and founder of One Salting, and Jerry is the COO and the company's COO of One Salting. And their company superpower is turning underdogs into winners by coaching people on the strategies of how to successfully get into their dream careers, which includes you knowing how to beef up your resume. And pause on that. I've been told we have to do our, our group selfie now before we dive right in. So if you haven't had a chance to fluff your image up, turn on your camera. If you'd like to do a group selfie, Musopi would be doing that for us before we dive right in. Amazing, thank you so much. Uh, can, um, Jerry, can you stop sharing your screen for a little bit, please? Thank you. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining in. So I'll be taking the selfie session. So please hold that smile, hold that pose. Let's see those fancy faces. I'll be taking the first screen now. Three, two, one, there we are. Now I'm gonna move to the second screen. Please keep that smile. Three, two, one. And I will do the third screen quickly moving through. Three, two, one, and Jumping onto the last screen, three, two, one. Thank you so much, everyone. Perfect, back to thank you, you so much. Thanks, Mr. Ope. Thank you so much for striking a pose there. We'll be sharing that out afterwards. And with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Jerry and John to kick it off. Awesome, everybody. Well, first off, thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, Days to be here. Really do appreciate it. and so excited. You could be anywhere, but you are here listening to us. I know two random guys uh, literally just talking about life, I guess. No, I'm kidding. We're here to help you all turn from underdogs into winners. But let's get started, Jerry. Let's go to the next slide. That works. Perfect. So quick introduction of myself. My name is Jonathan Avier. Uh, I go by he, him, uh, CEO, founder of Consulting, which our mission is to turn underdogs into winners. 
But before all of this, before all of Juan's whole thing, I still remember being like each and every one of you looking to edit my resume. And I remember getting my resume edited so many different times and I thought I had the perfect resume. But then when I sent in the applications to different companies I was interested in, all the big tech companies, the finance companies, et cetera, all I would receive is literally rejection emails. Who here has received a rejection email before? If you have, put a sad face in the chat. Yeah? Many of you, some of you, who here has received one of those? Oh my God, too many of you. All right, let's turn those frowns upside down, everybody. But actually by utilizing LinkedIn and getting my resume up to par, I was actually able to land my first role specifically at Snapchat. So I worked at Snapchat specifically in product operations. Do y'all got Snapchat? Who here is Snapchat? Everybody, right? Is Snapchat better than TikTok or TikTok better than Snapchat? Which one's, which one's better? TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, I see a TikTok, TikTok. Oh, Snapchat, Batik. You are you are unique, unique right here. TikTok, TikTok. All right, everybody. You know why Snap is not good anymore? Because I don't work there anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Only I was only there for eight months. Imagine being at your first job at eight months. Totally fine. But by utilizing LinkedIn again, I was actually able to land my next role specifically at Google. So I worked at Google specifically in sales strategy and operations uh, for our ads team. And then while at Google actually started Juan Solting, which our mission, like I said before, turning underdogs into winners. So helping those who come from non-traditional backgrounds and help them get into their dream careers. So, so far we've helped a lot of different folks and uh, hopefully we can help each and every one of you here today as well, okay? <laughs> and last but not least, someone said, since you worked there, TikTok's taken over. Yes, it's true, okay. But last but not least, I worked at Cisco specifically in go-to-market strategy and operations before doing Juan Solting full time, okay? Well, are y'all excited for today? Are y'all excited? If you want to make the perfect resume, put hashtag resume in the chat. Let us know. Let us know right now. Okay. And who here has seen us on TikTok? Anybody seen us on TikTok? I think the last time we were talking to y'all was, I don't remember, but it was, it was a while ago. Who here has seen us on TikTok? Has anybody? Maybe some of you. Has anybody seen, on IG? Oh, close enough. Close enough. Cool. Well, we're going to teach y'all today some of the amazing strategies that hopefully uh, we can help you all get into your dream careers with these different resume tips. And actually super excited to announce that uh, we are actually going to be leading or uh, we're going to be starting TikTok resumes. So we're actually going to be kicking it off next month. So we were selected. So uh, you guys, will, y'all, y'all will get a glimpse of uh, exactly how we kind of edit resumes and uh, help you turn from underdogs into winners. Okay, cool. All right. I'll hand it off to Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Cool. Thanks, John. Awesome, John. Thank you so much. First, everybody, thank you so much for being here. What's everyone's energy levels at right now? One to 10. One being like, Jerry, please, I need dinner. I'm hungry. I'm about to get Chipotle. Or 10 being like, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, no, Sierra's at a negative two. Amrita, you got to you gotta give somebody to Amrita. 8.32. Stefan, please. Stefan Chu. All right. Cool. Awesome. Everybody's at six, eight, seven, eight, nine, ten, some fives. Hopefully by the end of this workshop, every single one of you will be at an 11 or a 15 because that's where I am. But to those people who don't know me, uh, I am Jerry, co-founder, CEO of One Sulting. I'm going to share with you all a little bit about my background. So uh, I started college back in 2013, graduated in 2017, And it was at that point when I began to realize, man, I knew nothing about career development, resumes, interviews, networking, all of that. Who here's felt that way when you first started your career, that you knew nothing about how to write a resume? Type me in the chat if you felt like that. A lot of you all, right? A lot of you guys. Cool. I felt the exact same way, but it was through mentors people who have invested in me that helped me realize, hey, listen, like, this is how you write your resume. This is how how you put yourself out there, that I became the first intern at Google and later hired as the youngest analyst in my organization. I then beat that organization's fastest record for promotion in about eight months to become a strategist. Six months after that, strategy and operations manager. A year after that, I was my last role before I led product strategy at a tech company called Lucid at the age of 20. Five. But all, anyways, all this stuff, you guys are like, whoa, nice flex, Jerry, right? You guys might be thinking that. But today, what I hope to share with you all is, or some of the resume tips and strategies that sort of we've seen 
both on the hiring side as a hiring manager when we had conversations with the recruiting teams, but also as job seekers. And we condense everything that we know in the next hour. Is this what you guys came here to learn? If so, can I get a hashtag consulting in the chat? If you all are excited to hear a little bit more about resumes. Kimberly, okay, awesome. Good to hear Sierra. Awesome, cool. I love the energy. Let's get started. So we have two sections of the agenda today. First is the life cycle of resume. And second is how you perfect your resume. So I have a question for you all. Who are you designing a resume for? Are you designing it for the ATS, the recruiter, hiring manager? Who are you designing the resume for? Give me some answers. All, okay. Depends, hiring manager, hiring manager, all of them. Okay. Most of the time, ATS, ATS, all three. Okay. All right. We've got some good answers here. Well, we're going to answer this in next in the coming slides, but I want you all to think about what this question is, because this is really the key principle of how you should be all thinking about your resumes. So before we dive in, let's talk a little bit more about how, why the resume is important and what sort of steps it goes through throughout the recruiting process. So typically when you are thinking about creating a resume and you're applying to a job, this is what happens internally at the company. A recruiter will post a job description, an applicant will submit their resumes, the recruiter reviews the applicants, and then the recruiter screens the qualified candidates. And if you pass all these steps, then you are good enough to move to the interview stages. But there's a step that's missing here. What step do you think we're missing here in this? Any guesses? Is it networking? No, it's not networking. <laughs> exactly, Tushar, ATS, right? What about the ATS? <laughs> and I promise you, no networking here. The ATS, where does the ATS fall in that process? To answer this question, what I did was I actually signed up for an ATS to show you all exactly what an ATS looks like, what functionalities they have, and exactly how recruiting teams actually use it. Do you all wanna know what it looks like? Can I get a hashtag ATS if you all are excited to learn? And I'll also give you the logins as well if, if you really wanna play around with it. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and pull this up. So this is a company called iCruit. Um, it probably isn't as big of a, an ATS, but this is the only one that I could find that was free and allowed trial users. But by and large, a lot of the functionality that you see here is very in line with sort of the, the top ATS systems that are out there today. So when you're rolling into an ATS, immediately we, what you'll notice here on the left-hand side are sort of the jobs that you're sort of hiring for and sort of everything else. And these are sort of the, the functionalities that you would use as a recruiter to make your job as a, as a recruiter easy, easier. So let's say we go on to jobs. Let's say we have a new role. Someone give me a random uh, job title. Give me a random job title. Research designer. Research designer. I like it. All right, location. Let's choose a random one. You research and you design, right? You then get to choose, is it live? Is there certain templates? What can you specifically require? And then eventually you'll create a job. And this, the window that you'll get is a, hey, listen, where do you wanna sort of post this? Do you wanna post this on Google, Indeed, LinkedIn? But for this case, we won't do anything. But the ultimate, what it, one of the biggest misconception about an ATS is this functionality here, screening questions. Who here's heard about screening questions that they look for specific keywords or they rank your uh, resume and they say, oh, okay, hey, listen, like your resume is gonna, is 70 out of a hundred. Has anyone ever heard that 
that companies use ATS to screen your resumes. Yeah, cool. So let me show you what type of screening the typical ATS uses in, in almost in most cases. You get to answer a question and in the applications, then you get to reject a candidate if they answer, if they answer it wrong. But typically, the most typically the, mo the most common questions that people ask are, do you need a sponsorship to work in the US? Can you start immediately? Right. It's really those logistical type questions. Beyond that, most companies actually don't use an ATS to screen out your resumes. That is one of the biggest myths that, would, that, that exists out there today. So then comes the question, why do you use an ATS? The, exactly, Angela, I, Angela, thank you. People use an ATS because they want to make sure that they can organize all the applicants, all the, all the job descriptions, all the applicants, and so they can track every single candidate that goes in through a process. So for example, let's say that uh, you have uh, the job, the head of juggling at ADP list, right? You click on this list and then you sort of have these applicants, right? This is one of the best features about an ATS because it sort of is a glorified Excel spreadsheet that helps everyone stay on the same page on what the recruiting process looks like for every candidate. And beyond that, that's really it. Most of the time, what we hear all the time is that people try to make their resumes designed for the ATS. You want to design your resume so that it can be read by a recruiter or a hiring manager. That is one of the key principles that you'll sort of see here today, designed for people, not the systems. The only caveat being that if, you're, if you have a resume, make sure it can be parsed by the ATS. Make sure that when they go through your resume, or when you upload your resume, that they can say, okay, Jerry graduated college back in 2017, started work at Google, because they otherwise they'll have to manually and put all that information themselves. And that's about it. So key ATS takeaways. An ATS is basically a CRM of the recruiting world. For those people who aren't as familiar with CRM, CRM is a, a tool called a customer relationship management system, which essentially just puts every client into one software. The ATS does exactly that. Most companies do not auto filter using an ATS. And last but not least, you all, don't be afraid of the ATS. The ATS's job is to make the recruiting lives easier, recruiters' life easier. And it's to help them make sure that they don't spend their time organizing spreadsheets, rather they spend their time reviewing resumes and applicants. Any questions on ATS before we dive in and I hand it off to John? Any questions so far? I see an Ashwin Doobie has their hand raised. Cool, Ashwin, please. Hi, uh, thank you for this study. Uh, I just wanted to know, like, uh, then why are so many influencers and recruiters on LinkedIn these days writing about, like, uh, customizing your um resume to like quote unquote beat the the ats like why is it like that is it just like misinformation or uh, it's, is there something behind it yeah it's a really Thank good you. question most people use passing the ats as a term to to market their services and products there's your resume can be ats friendly which means that it can be parsed through an ats but beating the, there, it really is no auto rejection software unless for most of the cases. There are some edge cases, but by and large, most companies actually don't use an ATS to auto screen. So maybe I think there's a lot of confusion on what these softwares do today, but most of the time they don't auto screen, but they don't auto reject. Well, Brendan, please. So you mentioned specifically that ATSs could be used for recruiters to kind of organize uh, the information on your resume. 
Um, I ran into a situation actually just yesterday where I was applying for a job and um, it was for a large fintech company and the application system attempted to read my resume to automatically input or automatically fill in different um, parts of the form um, and it failed in doing that. So I had to completely do everything manually. Does that reflect that perhaps the way that my resume is structured is causing some friction for the ATS in the way that the recruiter will be trying to use it to help organize? Absolutely right, Brendan. That, and as a result, if you're, if you had to manually input information because the resume couldn't be parsed, that typically means that the, that the ATS is not familiar with the structure of your resume such that it could automatically populate that information for you. So again, I don't, each company uses their ATS differently. Some companies will keep a strong record of every candidate who's ever applied and make sure they fill out every single company information. All the companies are much more lax about it, but to err on the side of caution, I'd always recommend to people to have an ATS friendly resume because you never want to potentially add friction to a recruiter's work. I know that we have a, a number of much more slides that we want to go through and you want to do a live resume critique. For those people who have additional questions, free, feel free to put it in the chat below. John, feel free to take over the screen and then I can also answer them in the chat. Cool? Perfect. Sorry, everybody. My uh, my Wi-Fi is extremely slow, so don't mind me if I'm lagging. Okay, but first off, was that a good first part? Everybody, was that good? Yes or no? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat. Okay. Yes. No. Maybe so. Yes. All right. Perfect. Let's get into it then. All right. Perfecting your resume. All right, everybody. We're gonna teach y'all exactly how to do that. Okay. Cool. So, one thing, everybody. My question, y'all, is this. This is a random quote, maybe, maybe not. What does this quote mean? What does this quote mean, everybody? Put in the comments, what do you think this quote means? Styles come and go, good design is a language, not a style. And who agrees? Does, do you all agree with this? Styles come and go, and good design is a language, not a style. It's universal, that's right, Angela, great, great, great point. Anybody else? What does this mean? You agree, a lot of you? Nice. Okay. Hire designer to do your resume. True. Maybe, maybe so, right? It means a lot of communication. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is going to translate directly to the next slide, everybody. Now, check this out. What do y'all think of this resume right here at the left? Let's take a few seconds to look at it. What do y'all think of this resume? What are some words to describe this resume to the left? Give me some words. Give me some words, words, any words. What do y'all think? Is it good? Is it bad? Bland, boring, disorganized, quite bland, <laughs> needs some visual hierarchy love, love, right? Inconsistent. If you were a hiring manager or recruiter, would you take time to actually read this resume? Yes or no? Just by looking at it for a few seconds. Would you? Yes or no? Probably wouldn't, right? Let's go to the next one right here at the right. What do y'all think about this resume? What about this resume at the right? What do you think about this? Sorry if it's a little blurry, but what do you think about this resume at the right? Is it better than the one at the left or the one at the right better? Which one is better? What do y'all think? <laughs> it's better, right? Better, but too crowded either. Can't stand that layout, right? Cool. But the one at the right is ATS friendly, correct? This is an ATS friendly resume at the right. If you're a recruiter hiring manager, everybody, what would you look at first? The one at the left or the one at the right? Left or right? Obviously the right, right? Now let's go back to the quote. It says your style is extremely important. The reason why you're styling, especially on your resume is important is because you want the recruiter hiring manager to look at your resume and be like, oh, I want to read more of this, Tushar. I want to look at more of your resume. 
right? And so that's when I was editing my resume, but I remember sitting in my chair one day, watching TV, editing my resume, literally with portfolio in hand and watching, I don't know what I was watching, probably the NBA, right? And I remember thinking to myself, how do I beat ATS as they always say, a hugest buzzword in the world, right? I remember feeling that same way, okay? Oh, click it. And I felt like this, I felt like Jim here, who here has watched The Office? Some of you? I literally felt like Jim here. I was excited. I was like, dang, I'm about to get some interviews, right? I'm about to get some interviews. I think I'm going to be able to get some interviews. When in fact, moments later, recruiters wouldn't even look at my resume. I feel like Pam here, extremely sad and crying. Who here has felt like Pam right here? If you have put hashtag the office in the chat. I don't know who's your favorite character in the office, but my favorite character is obviously Dwight. Who here has felt like Pam, right? Many of you, correct? Pretzel day. <laughs> Love that reference. Okay, everybody. Well, the question is how long do recruiters actually take to read resumes? What do you think the average time is? What do you think the average time a recruiter takes to read resumes? 30 seconds, 15, three seconds, one minute. Dang. Some good guesses. Okay. Y'all are wrong. It's one hour. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, it's not one hour. It's, not, it's like watching a Netflix show. Someone give me some Netflix recommendations, by the way. I just finished Shadow and Bone. Freaking amazing TV show. If y'all haven't watched it, watch it. What are some Netflix recommendations all that? What are some good ones? Sierra's like, what? One hour? All right. Dark. All right, Dr. Stone, Mindhunter, good ones. Well, obviously, it's not one hour, everybody. It's actually six seconds. Who actually knew that? If you Google it, how many, how long does a recruiter take to look at a resume? It's actually six seconds. Now, what the heck? How is it six seconds, right? Well, it takes six seconds to make an educated decision whether or not to actually keep reading your resume. That's why it's important to have that style, have those hard skills, and make sure that that resume is complete. And so let's actually go through some resumes real quick, right? Let me click this real quick. All right, awesome. We're gonna do a six second test, okay? I'm gonna show us a resume and you're gonna have six seconds to look at it and then you're gonna give me some words to describe it, okay? Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, everybody. What are some words to describe? This resume. What are some words to describe this resume? Too disjointed, structured, organized, clean. Okay. Let's go back to it real quick. Oh, sorry, my computer's lagging. As always, let's see. Oh. Yeah, it's scannable. It's very clear hierarchy. It's clean. Yeah. Awesome. Would you keep reading this resume? Yes or no? Do you see any impact metrics? Who here sees any impact metrics? Do you see impact metrics? Okay, cool. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, everybody, six second test again, all right? Ready? You click it. What do you think about this one? I'll give six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. What are some words to describe this resume? Give me some words to describe it. What are some words to describe this resume? Metrics can't read a lot of info, right? It's too much on it. Impactful, overcrowded, yeah. Those are some great ones. But you see both of those different resumes, both of those resumes, one specifically was cleaner, it had more space to breathe, right? But it didn't have as much context compared to this one. So the reason why I show both of these is because you have to merge both of those together. It has to have clean formatting, but it also has to have those metrics and make sure that it has those impactful numbers, okay? A little bit information heavy, definitely, okay? So. Check this out, everybody, real quick. I'm actually gonna go walk through the exact resume structure, okay? So watch this. What do y'all think about this section? Let's say education and skills and interests. What do y'all think about this section? What's good and what's bad? Let's 
someone tell me what's it? typos okay cool <laughs> not English. typo clickable links are good yeah clickable links are good look jump is the best yeah what do y'all see it's probably not good right so why it's not good is number one obviously ucr this could be anything you see riverside you see rejects i don't know you have to make sure you spell out your specific university in there so they know which specific school okay number two your gpa do you think your gpa matters yes or no what do y'all think don't know what gpa is right what is gpa all right your gpa isn't indicative of what the work that you can do for a company. You can always omit your GPA if it's lower than a specific number, okay? What I used to do all the time actually is I put my major GPA because my major GPA was significantly higher, right? So remember that you don't always have to put your GPA, okay? Then the second part specifically put the organizations that you're a part of. For example, I would actually put your part of ADP list, right? All of you can add that specifically on your resume, right? Boston, yep. So it's different for finance and accounting ones. You can specifically put your resume for those. Those are the ones that typically look at GPAs, big banks and firms, okay? Why is the bottom one better than the top one? Why is the structuring, why is the wording better at the bottom than the top? What do y'all think? What is a good GPA? I personally think it's above a 3.5. <laughs> Relevance, consistency, and key. Exactly. Right. But do you see at the bottom, it actually shows hard skills. What's very important, everybody, I know you, most of you are UX designers and the design field, show the specific hard skills that you bring to the table. So, for example, if you use Figma, definitely include that. If you use Webflow, if you use Squarespace, all the websites that you've utilized, put it into your skills. And then when you're in your experiences, put those in your experiences as well to showcase that you've utilized those. That is why it's important to have the bottom part rather than the top, because the top does not show, show a story. Okay, let's keep going real quick. Let's say this work experience. What do y'all notice about this work experience right here? Yeah, sorry, I forgot to clarify. The GPA is, is, your, is basically your score from school. What do you think about this work experience right here? What do you all think about this work experience right here? Yeah, sorry if I'm lagging. My thing keeps saying internet unstable. So what happens when you live on the first floor and the Wi-Fi is on the third floor, okay? Responsibilities, not triumphs. Great, great, great. Good, seems generic, right? The thing is everybody with your resume, Despite whatever position it is, you can make sure that it's impactful. And the mistake that I see a ton, especially on resumes, is number one, you don't show how much impact you've made in a specific position. You'll just put the responsibilities. Make sure to show the impact that you made in each position. I'll show you exactly how through numbers and percentages. Number two, including those skills from the previous one onto your experiences. So for example, made reports, what did you make reports on? These are the questions you should be asking specifically on your resume. So whenever you go to a bullet point, ask yourself these questions. Well, how many reports did I do? I did five reports. How did, what did I, on which platform did I do this on? Maybe I did Excel or Tableau. What kind of analysis or research? Let's say I did a UX design analysis. I don't know, right? You have to showcase those hard skills and experiences because some other candidate might do exactly that and be more qualified specifically on their resume when in fact they might not be. It's just that you didn't explain it or exemplify it in your resume. So check this out real quick. What do you think about this part? This res this when well, let's see we revised it. What do you think about this part? So I put it in specific colors so you can see the exact sections of it what do you think about this one compared to the last one better worse let me know so for this one for example it's way better right why is it way better check this out so what happens is this everybody most people will have this correct but when you ask yourself actual questions 
to your resume, everybody, you have to do this. Go to your resume and ask yourself these questions. How many? What kind did I do? What platform? Who did I work with? How many people did I work with? When you're able to do that, you'll be able to quantify your metrics significantly and your percentages. So check this out real quick. You have the first part, you specifically start with action verbs, generated, collaborated with, designed, et cetera. These are the first words. You should always start with action verbs. Do not start with pronouns. People, some I see some resumes say, I did this, show action and impact, okay? The second part is the quantifiable metrics. You see how the red parts are all numbers? Showcase it. Okay, what if there are no impact measurements, say at a small startup? Great question. One thing that you can specifically do, you can always quantify things. For example, what I see all the time is, how many people did you collaborate with? I would change the second one from collaborate with senior management. I would say collaborated with three managers and quantify it in that way. Another thing as well is you can always ask your colleagues to as well in regards to what the metrics are. And if you can make a quick estimate in your head, definitely include it as well, okay? Next part is the hard skills. Now, why is the hard skills extremely important? The hard skills are important because, for example, let's say the position requires Figma and requires working with, I don't know, let's say Webflow. You want to make sure that those are specifically in your experience bullets because that then, when a recruiter sees it, they'll be like, oh, this person, Pooja, has utilized Webflow and Figma. They're a great candidate. That brings in about the qualified candidate piece of it, okay? And what I like to do all the time and what we like to talk about is your first part is kind of the responsibility. Like, what did you do? And the next part, the last part is what impact that you made specifically in that position. So, for example, the first part is, oh, I generated reports, blah, 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 did trend analysis. And then what was the impact that I made? Oh, we optimized Weebly website, which increased retention by 15%. Does that make sense? So that is exactly how you quantify metrics. It's actually as easier than you think. The thing is people always go to us and are like, oh, how do I quantify this, Jonathan, Jerry? It's more simple. It's much more simpler than you think. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Let's keep going. Okay, cool. So last but not least, leadership experience, right? Same thing, everybody. You ask yourself these questions very similar to work experience. Ask yourself questions, okay? How many professionals did you work with? From where? There are so many different things you can ask yourself and you can change it from this to this. Oh, I partnered with 100 plus professionals and recruiters. Oh, I proposed research and data from campus statistics. Even if it's a leadership position, everybody, or a project experience, you can still showcase what you bring to the table through impact and through hard skills, okay? And everybody, all, people always tell us, well, what happens if you don't have any relevant work experience? Put your projects, put projects you all are working on. Maybe you have a UX design research project you're working on. Maybe you're working with this and that. Add it to your resume, okay? And how I know that you can quantify metrics and add all this stuff is, let's give you an example, a real life example. Someone give me a singer, that they love. Who's a singer that they love? An artist. Someone give me an artist. Exactly, Kishana. Great, great points. Someone give someone give me an artist that they like, like a singer. Joyce, Beyonce, Usher, Britney Spears, <laughs> Tame Impala. I saw them at Coachella, Sarah. Nice one. Cool. Great artist, right? You know who I think of? I don't know if he's a good artist. Who is this person right here? Who is this person right here? DJ Khaled. What do y'all think about DJ Khaled? Did y'all see him in the boxing match? He was, no one was singing with him. I felt kind of bad, right? Another one, another resume, right? Or when you get a rejection, another rejection. I'm just kidding, right? What does DJ Khaled do? He can't eat hot wings. That's right. What does he do? What does he do, everybody? What does DJ Khaled do? There's not saying another one. All he does is win. Chris, you're right. No one knows, honestly. I don't know either, but I assume he does this, right? I assume he plays and sings music, right? Let's say that this is a bullet specifically on DJ Khaled's 
resume. What do y'all think about this bullet? It's okay, all right? It's literally a responsibility. Well, what happens if I literally went like this? Perform 10 plus songs for 4,000 attendees at Coachella, receiving a 99% positive feedback score on singing, which contributed to an increase of ticket sales by 33%. Exactly, Brendan. Where? How many people? But do you see everybody? How you just asked yourself those questions, just like Brendan did, great job, to your bullets. When you do that, you can have a bomb line just like that right there. Isn't that sound way better than the first one? Right? That's exactly how you quantify and you're able to show impact on your resume, okay? And so, Last but not least, everybody, we always get these questions. What happens if they don't, if I don't know the, the numbers? Who here has thought this way? Like, oh, I don't know the numbers to this. I don't know the numbers to this. Yeah. It's okay, everybody. Estimate them. Honestly, everybody, estimate them. Okay. And why I say this is well, obviously, do not make, do not say, for example, oh, I increased revenues by 30,000%. It's unrealistic. Say something that you think that you did if you don't know the number, or you can even ask your manager or colleagues, right? Oh, I increased percentage by 13%. One thing you could do everybody is what I'd love to say is, let's say you completed a project and it was supposed to be due in seven days and you did it in five days, you average it out, that's 40% increase of efficiency because you finished in two days earlier. It's that simple, everybody. And someone, and people always ask us all the time, what happens if you don't have, if you have a lot of info? Who here's a lot of info on their resume? A lot of you, right? I used to have a ton too as well. Everybody make sure to condense and consolidate your resume. Always remember not everything has to be on your resume. For example, if you're going to UX design and you put that you are a worker at McDonald's, it's irrelevant to the role. Always remember to put the relevant experiences on your resume. And last but not least, before we go to resume critiques, should you put all your efforts into making the perfect resume? Yes or no? What do you think? It's only one part of everybody. Always remember that there are so many different sections and different things. Networking can come to play, resume, knowing people. Put these all together and that's how you land a job in 2021. By doing these things, you're able to quantify the metrics and showcase the skills that you all specifically have. Because I know for a fact, a lot of you have amazing skills. The one thing you just need is the opportunity. Any questions before I go to resume critique? Yeah, for those people who want to share your resume for a live resume critique, and John, I can share my screen uh, because the internet looks a little funky. Uh, please post your resume in a shareable Google yeah. Doc in the chat, and we will choose one and critique it live. While we're waiting for the resumes to drop in, this I'm going to ask a question from the Q&A that got the most votes so far. So uh, one or two column layout for design resumes. Oof. I think in the spirit of uh, making it easily parsable by the ATS, one column. Much easier for the recruiter to read, easier to parse on the ATS, and <clears throat> it's traditionally a much uh, more well-recognized format. I agree. Make it easy on the recruiter and make it easy on the eyes too. Let <laughs> me sneak in another one. This is from KL. Uh, how do you balance a designer resume and one that can be parsed through the ATS? Such as, like, is it bad to use Illustrator or Figma, whatever, to create the resume? I think in general, the, the general principle should be that it should follow a one page one page structure. It should have the different experience sections, you should have your dates, your job titles, nothing that goes too off the beaten path. We have a resume template that we've designed with the ATS in mind on our website, wantsulting.com slash resources. It's completely free. So if you wanna go on there, download the resume template and see how you can add your creative element to it, whether it's using colors, whether it's the way that you use lines, but in general, you should follow that similar structure. All right, 
looks like you got plenty of resumes in the chat to choose from. All right, let me go ahead and choose one here. Yeah. And let me go ahead and present my screen. Uh, I can type the website in the chat. Cool, everybody. So let me go ahead and present my screen here. Awesome, everybody. Uh, so maybe we'll start from uh, the top down. So uh, so it looks like this resume is a two-column two resume. One of the things that you'll notice on uh, two-column resumes is that if you sort of zoom out a little bit, if you sort of zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that roughly maybe about 50% of the resume is used for the experience. Everything else is sort of lit, used to like write out the skills, research, tools, development, all that is great. But what's even better is if you have those skills in your bullet points. So one of the things that we'd recommend is to use a one page resume, use, take full advantage of bullets and make sure that when you write bullet points on your, under each experience, that it's no more than two lines. It's much easier to read on the eyes. John, is there anything else that you'd add? Yeah, I mean, uh, just Sean, I think you're, you're, far, you're, you're it's, it breeds, so it's a good good uh, part of it. Um, one thing too as well is, uh, yeah, I would put specific bullets like in your uh, in your sections because I realize like for leading from the research, I assume that that's all one line. Definitely put some bullets into there so you can separate uh, each um, separate each of the different uh, what do you call it? separate each of the different experiences that you've had. So then the recruiter or hiring manager can read it more uh, more uh, easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm trying to look at it. Yeah. And the other thing that I notice here is that on your most recent role, typically the, your most recent role is what you want to talk most about because your most recent role is something that is fresh, something that you're currently in. So one of the things I'd highly recommend is adding more detail on your most recent role. Of course, there are exceptions, but in general, you want to add the most detail here because chances are people are going to ask you more, most questions about this. And similarly, I see here that it says to increase upsell and cross-sell funnels. Cool, love it. The question is by how much? If you don't have the actual numbers, then you should at least have the intended benefit. Expected to increase upsell and cross-sell funnels by 6%. Again, these, don't, these numbers don't have to be perfect, but they should be in the ballpark realm of what impact that you should expect. I agree. Yeah. And like, and web and mobile platforms, for example, like that, put the specific platforms, same thing that we talked about before. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. In the spirit of time, we'll move on to the next one. Cool. John, you want to take a stab at this? Yeah. Okay, cool. Stefan, what's up, Stefan? Cool. It says Dr. Philosophy, Queensland University. Cool. Okay. Nice. Designing and conducting. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, it's two pages. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay, cool. Let's go back up, Jerry. Sorry. Okay, great. Does he have a skill section? I didn't mean to see. Uh, it doesn't look. Oh, yeah, right here. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the resume, is, it's good. There's a lot of, a lot of different things that you've specifically added into here, which is wonderful. I would add more metrics specifically in regards to like, for example, the first one for UX research lead. I know for a fact that you made a ton of different impacts specifically in your role, considering that you are a lead for this position, right? So for example, it says triangulated with user surveys. How many people did you specifically uh, specifically uh, interview with user surveys? What did you specifically use to conduct those user surveys? I think it's very important to add those specific parts. And yeah, I mean, honestly, Stefan, you have some great experience. Just, just wanted to say that. Yeah, yeah. Stefan, I think you had the hardest part done, which is getting relevant and good experience. That's, you already are 90% there. The 10% of the part is now figuring out what are the specific skills that you want to show for each bullet point. So for example, if, you're, if you've already 
have uh, a bullet that's sort of around designing and conducting experiences, it probably doesn't, you don't need to repeat it for every single role that you've had, because chances are, if you've done it in one role, then you probably could do it again in another role. So making sure that each bullet point is there for a reason. Bullet point number one on UX research lead, I want to show people that I can design and conduct experiences. Second, I want to show that I can do teamwork. Third, I want to be able to do this. It's important to not duplicate the same exact detail or skill that you want to demonstrate to the recruiter because you're sort of hammering in the same level of information. Unless you're going for a very specialized role where the only fun that is the only required function for the role, then you want to show as much time as you possibly can. So in this case, Stefan, I think it, I think that there is a possibility for you to be able to condense your resume into one page if you use a one column res or a one column resume. But, yep, one column resume. And the second thing that's most important is probably being specific about what is the purpose of your resume. Do you want to have one resume, resume that's more education focused, given that you're a PhD, or do you, and do you also want to have another resume that's work, more work focused, that's more for if you want to break into a tech company? It's important to have that distinction because that'll help you allow, that'll force you to shorten the length of your resume to a page. And secondarily, it'll help provide the relevant information and not just giving everything out there to the recruiter. Yep. Also, you don't need a picture at the top, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I would admit that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oops. Let's maybe look at one more resume here. Choosing one Wait, at random. Let me pop in and share with the audience. So announcement. So one Salting is actually giving all of our AP list friends, you all an amazing deal, a discount on their courses. So we're going to drop, Jessica just dropped a link on there. So if you're interested in taking out the courses, checking them out, then check out that link there. Yeah. All right, guys, we want to you. make sure we covered that. And, <laughs> cool. and yeah. uh, I got the green light. That's okay if we go a little bit over, if you guys want to cover one or two more resumes. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so let's quickly run through this resume. Yeah, I would add the bullet the, the bullets to those. I mean, looks like yeah, and bullets to those, but also like for example, like we said before, ask those ask those questions for the UX designer right here. We said create dashboards. What for what did you specifically use for those dashboards? Or which dashboards did you utilize? You used Figma to make that, etc. Um, and also, like I said before, the impact metrics, uh, specifically with how much impact you made on the role. How many stakeholders did you present to? Did you present through a specific platform like Microsoft Teams, Office, whatever? whatever the specific platform is. Yep. And this is an example where it actually might be a little bit tough to for the ATS to process because the ATS may not recognize that this is sort of under your freelance experience. It may not be able to distinguish between your job title versus your, uh, the, the, I guess, the organization, what type of role it is. It might be able to pick up on the dates. But as John said, yeah, so you want to make sure that the format of your resume is ATS parsable. Second thing is, of course, you want to have impactful bullet points. Similar to similar along the same similar feedback as John, work on cross-functional teams. Cool. Which cross-functional teams? How many people? Incorporate designs. How many designs? What type of designs? What tools did you use? You built a great design system. How do we know it's a great design system? What exactly is the system? What is it supposed to do? What impact can you drive? So those are some of the questions that come to mind. If I were to look at this pro, uh, profile or sorry, resume, just to make sure that like I fully understand what that looks like. And Vahid asks, do graphics affect the ATS? Graphics do not get parsed by the ATS, only text does. Ooh, Canva ATS friendly. I would actually avoid Canva. Uh, I don't think it, Canvas are ATS friendly. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of recruiters or we've spoken to a lot of recruiters. They say they wouldn't recommend Canva. Yeah, their templates on there typically isn't great. So I'd, I'd recommend that. Mm -hmm. A question in the Q&A, so someone had asked, is there value in showing how you progress through an organization from like entry to leadership role? Absolutely. I think similar to how this, uh, to how Destiny listed multiple sort of experiences under one work, uh, work experience, I would do the exact same thing. So for example, if you're a VP of design, and you're a director of design here, and you're a design manager, senior designer, right? So I'd recommend that you sort of structure your resume in that way so that you can show the progression of each uh, of your experiences. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Liz asks, uh, do you have any resource that can explain what ATS friendly examples? I'd highly recommend that you just sign up for a regular ATS and run your resume, or sorry, a free ATS and run your resume through it. That's probably the easiest way to see if you're, how easily an ATS can parse through your resume. If one can do it, chances are a lot of them else will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Agree. But again, if you use a traditional format in general, you should be fine. Exactly. Cool. cool. I think that's solid. Yeah. Cool. 601. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, everybody. Well, thank you all for your time and attention today. If you are interested in having our entire team rewrite your resume from start to finish, we do have the ADP referral link there. Feel free to use it. You'll get $30 off. Similarly, I'll also post down uh, once old team social media if you have any questions. Thank you, everyone. John, any last minute thoughts? Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Really appreciate it. You could be anywhere, but you're honestly listening to us. So that's a wonder wonderful. Um, definitely connect with us on LinkedIn. Just search Jonathan Javier or Jerry Lee. Uh, connect with us. I put my Instagram if you have any questions. So, uh, but yeah, definitely add us, okay? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining, especially people. I know someone had tuned in. It was like 3 a.m. where they were. So really appreciate wow. the, the attention. Awesome. Yes. All right, everybody. Well, hope everyone has an amazing day. and. Uh, have a good one. Have a good week. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Be happy. Be safe. We'll see you next time. See y'all.